she vanished from her home. She gave me a hug and told me she loved me. And that's the last time I seen her. Leaving behind so many unanswered questions. Did 15-year-old Megan Nichols simply run away? Basically, it said, Mom, I love you, but I'm never going to be happy here. Or did someone make her disappear? That's the last person that Megan did try to reach that night. And what was she doing at the bank? And sure enough, Megan was at the ATM on that day. The answer to at least two of those questions may lie in this rural Illinois field. A spot where a couple just made a major discovery, one that could finally help crack this case. Crime Watch Daily first told you about Megan Nichols two years after she had disappeared from her mother's home in the tiny town of Fairfield, population 5200. My relationship with Megan was very close. We did everything together. It was 4th of July weekend. Fireworks, barbecues, and for Megan, a little bike ride. One that would take on new meaning in the hours to come. She said, do you care if I go on a bicycle ride? And I said, I don't care. Just don't be doing anything you're not supposed to be doing. After getting back from a ride, Megan and her mother, Kathy Jo Hutchcraft, go shopping. But Megan cuts things short. She told me she didn't feel good and she wanted to go home. Kathy Jo drops her daughter off at home and Megan says she's going to go to bed. And she gave me a hug and told me she loved me. Kathy Jo heads back out to finish her shopping. She's gone an hour. And I just got this sick feeling that I needed to go check on Megan. And I went upstairs and she was gone. I just knew. I knew it was bad. I immediately called my mom. Kathy Jo and her mother look for clues. We went back upstairs and I pulled her blanket back. And that's when I found her phone. And when I picked it up, oh, my heart sank. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is real. The phone has been wiped clean. All photos, messages, contacts, any and every sign of Megan deleted. I, I just started crying. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And my mom said, well, we're going to pray. So we went into Megan's other room and we knelt down to pray. And there was a note. It's from Megan. Basically, it said, Mom, I love you, but I'm never going to be happy here. Don't come looking for me because why spend a lifetime looking for somebody who doesn't want to be found? Then, with those harsh words still lingering, Kathy Jo gets a lead. A friend had messaged me, have you checked the bank accounts? No, I hadn't. So I got online and I checked the bank accounts, and sure enough, money had been withdrawn on July the 3rd around 2 o'clock p.m. Remember that bike ride Megan asked her mom if she could go on? Sure enough, Megan was at the ATM on that day. We've seen that video. A final glimpse. And that's the last time I seen her. <laughs> Megan's family offers up evidence of the phone and the note to police. Her mom also tells investigators about a boy Megan has been seeing. Fairly soon before her disappearance, Megan was seeing a young man. One her mother didn't approve of for many reasons, including she says he was cheating on her. I've had it at that point. He's using her and you, and you're done. You know, you're 15, he's 18, this is over. But she knew it wasn't over. And when Kathy Jo received the cell phone records from the day her daughter disappeared, the proof would be in black and white. The last three calls, I want to say, that she made before she disappeared or supposedly ran away from home were made to this boy. That boy, whose father is an Illinois state policeman, responded to the rumors he was somehow involved in Megan's disappearance on his Facebook page, writing in part, okay, this has gone on long enough. I had nothing to do with this, and then I have nothing to hide. I shouldn't even have to defend myself if I'm not involved. And police agree, saying he was not considered a suspect. Nearly two more years would pass when just a few months ago, a Fairfield resident who happens to know Megan's mom would provide the biggest piece of evidence in this case since the teen disappeared. It made me sick. Like my stomach, I just, my stomach turned. Jackie Beck and her boyfriend were out cutting up firewood on this rural farm, just a few miles south of Megan's home when they spotted something shiny. It was a human skull and bones. 
She tells Crime Watch Daily it appears the remains were placed in a shallow grave and were wrapped in a blanket. The FBI would later confirm it was Megan Nichols. It's hard enough to find something, you know, like that, but turn around that you know the person, it's just 10 times worse. Police are not revealing any details on how Megan may have died, simply calling it an ongoing investigation. One chapter is now finally closed, others remain open, and Megan's mother is now left with only sweet memories. It's not unlike Megan to come down the stairs singing. I still look for her, you know, she should still be there. If you have any information on her disappearance, you're asked to call the Fairfield Police Department. That number is 1-618-842-2151.